what's up, Baru? So is Child going to face his crime head on or head off? What about Linny and Lynette's second trial? Where are they going and why is it Risley's house? Finally, what should we expect from the biggest characters from 4.0? A war or rebellion? Someone going crazy or another one of God's useless blessings on this world? So welcome to another video about why you should talk to my lawyer. In this video, we'll go over Child's unsurprising, surprising sentence, ya boy, Raya Tesley and the Fortress of Meropide's lore, and what may happen with these characters and places in the future. This video was created before the 4.1 live stream and I'm just really slow and I haven't watched it yet, but I hope what I say lines up correctly with the stream. As always, timestamps will be below. Let's get started. Starting with the twins Linny and Lynette, who were innocent of murdering their own assistant but confessed to snooping into the orator's courtroom. What interests me is if they will get another trial in the next patch. Linny and Lynette's actions can be put in court for alleged trespassing and possible tampering with an Archon's creation and Fontaine's main source of energy. But they spoke their intentions wholeheartedly. Unless that new Fatui version of their art means another deceptive mask that fooled us. They are of course actors and are trained to convince their audiences that their act is genuine before revealing their final trick. As mentioned by their king or father who changed their lives for the better, seeing themselves as genuine members who would value their own lives, different from their previous director who taught them to sacrifice themselves for the family. This difference is prevalent in the previous or older hearth members we met, Katarina and Nikolai, Leodochka, Trofin Snezhevich, and the others. Artikino, the twins, and all the hearth members, especially the children, in Fontaine are from Fontaine, so it's understandable they would want to save their homeland. But I want to see what else Arlecchino has up her sleeve. Why those gloves don't look like gloves. Why she acts the way she does to Linny and Lynette, as well as the other children. Why she wants members to value their lives over their duty. And why she wants to save Fontaine once she gets the hydronosis. I've made videos about Arlecchino and the House of Hearth in detail already, so you can check those out. But Arlecchino is the knave, and is the most unpredictable and treacherous of the Commedia dell'arte. She's also the Harlequin, and the most proficient of all the Zani. She's very cunning and would only show her true intentions when it is most advantageous to her, as well as switching sides and betraying others if it benefits her greatly. There's a reason why Child and Scaramouche call her crazy. Different from Dottore who is an experimental psycho focusing on his experiments and Scaramouche who is or was hellbent on becoming a god. Arlecchino's true intentions isn't something she openly shows to everyone, and those who have seen her true self have all either disappeared or likely died. All except for possibly Linny and Lynette. Public enemy number one, Child or Tartalia or Ajax, is the 11th harbinger of the ever-so-protagonistic Fatui organization in the snowy region of Shneznaya. A born troublemaker whether he likes it or not, who fell into the abyss as a kid and gained the power to control it from his master. He then returns to his homeland after three days on the surface, but to child in the abyss, it was a very long three months with a new urge to fight any opponent once he gets an opportunity. Now we all know what he did in the past as well as what he is capable of up until the current patch, but in regards to Fontaine, we don't know why he's proclaimed guilty by the Oratrice, Mechanique, the Annalise, Cardinal, as well as the real reason for him being in Fontaine to begin with. Since it's child, we can at least assume that we'll be in for a lot of fighting, which leads us to his hydrovision that he gave to us because it seemed unstable. Keeping his electrovision, which is a manufactured version of Celestia's visions. We can also know more about Child's master, Skirk, and maybe even more details on his excursion in the abyss, especially that whale that haunted him in his dreams. Finally, his abyss power, foul legacy that he always had within him and was further honed through Skirk's training. But Child being guilty in a trial that isn't supposed to be about him anyway is an interesting conflict since we don't know what exactly makes him guilty. Unless he is related to Vache in some way because they're both from Sneznaya, but this shouldn't be the case since the Oratress is so intricately made that it can separate crimes on a case-by-case -case basis. So long as it is fed with the right information through the trial, it 
can and will output a correct and fair verdict. We've already seen this instance happen with Linny and Lynette being innocent of murder even though they are Fatui members of the House of Hearth and did confess to looking into the Oratrice core room. The fact that Child has a hydrovision that for some reason doesn't work well in Fontaine is also interesting to me. We already know that the Archons themselves aren't responsible for the visions being given, so the next possible point is an annihilation reaction with his vision and his delusion. Fontaine's work and military robots take their power from the environment, the Numa Osha Energies, or Arki, a power source separate from the Seven Nations' power, counteracting each other and creating the annihilation reaction. This Arki is also somehow linked to vision holders and which alignment they have, even though it is a power source different from the Seven. It's also quite interesting that both these new energies are related to what we know from Honkai Impact as quantum and imaginary. But that's for a Honkai slash Genshin theory. For Child, this could mean that his vision and delusion are counteracting against each other, similar to Arki. But Child could just discard his delusion instead of his vision if that was the case. I mean, we are technically his enemies, so he wouldn't just give a delusion away, nor do we completely know what other setbacks delusions have. Maybe delusions are built into people instead of just given as catalysts. But there's another possible reason for him giving his vision instead of his delusion. The biggest culprit I could think of is the high concentration of the hydro element in Fontaine. If you have noticed, we haven't met any hydro users in Fontaine apart from Child. We've met quite a bit of characters already from Fontaine, and apart from maybe two unknowns, so far none of them are hydro. And the only likely hydro characters that we know are Nouvellet and Forina. So my headcanon is Child's problematic vision is linked to Fontaine's hydro sensitivity and concentration. We also have the primordial seawater, which even though is supposed to be all over the entire planet, whatever the planet is called, it's likely more concentrated in Fontaine than any other region. Which leads me again to Fontaine's hydro sensitivity. His vision is also a good reason for the Orichis to mistakenly call him guilty. This could of course apply to his delusion and his foul legacy, but we already know that the Orichis can announce verdicts on a case-by-case -case basis. This possible error on the Orichis could be from one of those factors, but the Fatui and Child himself are already a mess of things that were done and have have gone wrong. So maybe the Orichis just can't find any objective innocence from Child. Now, whether Child is guilty or innocent, will more than likely be visiting Child at my favorite spot in Fontaine, the Fortress of Meropide or the Meropis. Not only is this where Best Boy, Rusty, works at, it's also where King Remus, the first king of Remoria, first descended. But let's talk about Rizli and the Meropide first. The Fortress of Meropide is Fontaine's glorified underwater prison where all criminals convicted after trials are taken. It's located at the bottom of the sea where no infiltrator can sneak into, lest be drowned in the surrounding waters. This scene here could mean it's somewhere underneath Fontaine's city itself, similar to the Spina di Rosula's sewer district but much, much deeper down. The Meropide is notorious for its reputation of its corrupt criminal network. Its gangs and organizations within the prison can easily sway a Fontaine guards morality. But to the Meropide's current administrator and Lord Risley, it's a simple ordered life that the convicts themselves wanted to have, and he merely gave them the tranquility they desired. Risley himself seems fairly relaxed and even aloof, but he knows what his inmates want and he delivers it to them by letting them to their own devices, possibly as long as they don't escape or try to sneak out of the Meropide. Laying down a large number of rules to make the guards' duties easier and, dare I say, easier for him. Judging from his scars and his worldly personality, he seems to realize that the inmates in his prison simply want a life that they never got to live on the surface. He knows what is practical for his inmates and understands from his experience what his inmates would want and need. Hence his reputation as the Duke or the Lord of the Fortress of Meropide. Now let's talk about the Meropide itself and what the Meropide might have in store for us. The name Meropide also means Meropis, a Greek parody of Atlantis meant to exaggerate what Atlantis already had to extreme and ludicrous heights, which is for the most part pretty accurate in Genshin's lore. Atlantis was a highly advanced region that used Firestone, a large crystal that took energies from the stars and gave that energy to different technological apparatuses of their land. Sound familiar? 
Yeah, that's not the half of it. And we're talking about Atlantis, not Meropis. Meropis was far more absurd. Located beyond the world ocean, Oceanus' land, which was the father of all the Oceanids. The people were twice as tall and could live twice as long as normal humans. And the land was separated into three radically different cities. This, I think, is more of a reflection of ancient Remoria than the actual Meropite fortress itself. Meropis had three cities. Eusebius, or Pious Town, which lived in opulence, never getting sick or hungry. Machimos, or Machimos, the fighting town where people were born with weapons, carrying out wars steadily. And Anastos, or Place of No Return, which is the outer border of Meropis, characterized by a yawning abyss and a place with no day or night, or in our case, no sun and moon, covered by dark red fumes. Eusebius is likely Remoria itself with its splendor and opulence under King Remus's rule. Machimos is actually a place in Remoria where brave Remorian warriors live. And Anastos, with its red fumes, I could think of as the Abyss, or an entrance to the Abyss. Similarly, Remoria had three main separations in the land. The people of Remoria who lived in luxury and were under Remus's guidance, the tribespeople who were living in puny realms and lone island villages, and finally the sea-born dragon bishops closest to the deep. Now, whichever relationship you think is better is up to you, but there's clearly a connection between Meropis and Remoria's, as well as Fontaine's history. And one of these places is possibly an entrance to the abyss, similar to Snezdaya and their Fatui missions to the abyss. So we'll most likely know more about Fontaine's two older eras, Aguirre's and Remus's. Maybe even a bit of the Seely era and the Primordial era, when the second one came, with forbidden knowledge. From every region we've been to in the past, one thing is prevalent about Archons, and it's that every Archon's power stems from how much they rule over their region. Venti is the weakest because he wants to uphold freedom by not ruling Mondstadt. Zongli once ruled Liyue Harbor, but now he wants to leave humanity to their own devices. The Raiden Shogun A rules Inazuma with an iron fist, hence her astonishing display of power. Nahida has just begun her rule after the disappearance of Ruka de after being trapped, but Farina's case is interesting since her people see her as a mascot instead of an actual ruler. I honestly can't say how powerful she may be or if she has any power to use at all. The people of Fontaine still regard her as the Hydro Archon God of Justice, but as the memes call her the useless god, and the people, even Nouvellet, often makes jokes about her demeanor. She still does her job as the God of Justice to keep dangers from Fontaine, with the main threat being Fontaine's prophecy, likely left by Egeria for her to solve. The Udex Nouvellet is honestly someone I am interested in the most. The Dragon of Water being Fontaine's Chief Justice is slowly getting to my head. He's more friendly with the Melusine than he is to humans. They also say that when it rains in Fontaine, the Dragon of Water weeps. And seemingly, whenever Nouvellet feels a bit unhappy, it rains. It rained after his argument with Navia. And it rained on the day of Callus' duel with Clorand. It even rained when Callus was almost assassinated. And it was also raining after Vache's death. And it kept raining until we went to meet with Navia after several days. And after Nouvellet spoke with Navia to clear things up, it stopped raining. Not to mention a certain character, Shubalang K, one entombed with primal fire, speaks of their true ordeal when they return. If those aren't hints that he's the Hydro Dragon, then I don't know what is. And there we go, a video focusing on the trials itself and everyone related to it, as well as what might happen in 4.1. Hopefully, it lines up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about going deeper underneath Fontaine. And if you did enjoy, leave a like, comment, and share your thoughts on the Meropide, as well as Child in the Twins trial. Not to mention the Father Arlecchino, the Udex Nouvellet, and the useless God of Justice, Farina. No excuses, this was not a video about the 4.1 livestream. I'm just gonna make another proper video after this one but that's basically it for now so i'll see you guys in the next video yeah like comment if you enjoyed subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists bye